Yeah, just a reminder. Did you send out a reminder tonight? You're listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. So it's my brother, can you spare a dime? My God shall supply my need. Don't have to take because I am a seed. Because every good. Amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. It's so good to be with you today. I'm in the process of uh, getting a couple of things started. Today is Friday. Amen. It's the third Friday of the month of August, and I'm so glad to be able to share it today with the Madison Hot Singers Christmas Ministry. Amen. I'm going to be talking about a book, um, You Are Enough. I'm waiting for a couple more people to, to sign in. Uh, you are enough by Rainey Howard. I know that hope is with the sister. Hope is with the and everything. And uh, I'm, I'm glad this is with me because I'm trying to figure out where everybody else is at. But you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to figure out where everybody else is at and stuff like that. So, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started. I just want to remind you uh, real quick of what we got going on. Uh, um, we have uh, several things going on next week. We have Peace of Bound and Grace with Minister Vanessa Williams every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Declaring the Finish Work with Reverend Pat Randall is Thursday, 12 noon. Uh, Friday Night Joy, of course, is the first, the second, and the fourth Friday at 7 p.m. Amen. Um, we also have uh, uh, the Board in the Beautiful, Reverend Board in the Beautiful, Reverend Novena Reed, Reverend Curtis Austin, and Minister. Jordana Cunningham, amen. That's uh, every second Saturday at 10 a.m. We also have Talent to Change with Pastor Paul Morgan. That's every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Lifeline with Apostle Shirley Jones every first Monday at 7 p.m. We have a lot of broadcasts, y'all. Marriage Takeover, The Body of One with Pastor Eric and Pastor Tamika Talvin is every fourth Sunday at 7 p.m. Um, Adoration with Evangelist Lewis Mac- McElwain is every third Monday of the month. At 7 p.m., Real Talk, Real men, real Life, Real Men, Real Talk is every second Sunday at 7 p.m. And Midday Glory Prayer, Reverend Gwen Dixon, is every Wednesday at, at 1 p.m. Amen. And it looks like I got a couple of people that are signing in now and everything. And don't forget about switching up because the truth is every second and fourth Monday at 8 p.m. I'm doing something a little different because I'm still trying to do some things in the background. Um, Sister Hope, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and pray us in, if that's okay with you, okay? Okay. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we come before you with praise and thanksgiving on our lips. Lord, we just thank you for this day. Heavenly Father, you woke us up this morning in our right mind. With our full senses intact and the activity of our limbs, we don't take it for granted, Lord. You kept us safe as we slept last night. Thank you for third Friday, Lord. Every month we come together, Lord, with great discussions where we're learning and we're understanding ourselves better and hopefully that we're helping others who are listening in on the conversation. Thank you that you're leading and guiding us in the direction that you want to go. Thank you for empowering us, Lord God, with the knowledge that we need in order to go on with this walk in you, in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless the commentators in the name of Jesus, Father God. Give us, give extra strength and encouragement to Ray. Give extra strength and encouragement to Pastor Wilson in the name of Jesus. And everyone who's on the panel, Lord, we just thank you, Lord. Use us according to your worth, your glory, your might, and your power. And we shall never fail to give you all the praise, honor, and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Again, I want to welcome you to Matters of the Heart Singles, Singles Christian Ministry. I'm Ray, and we're going to talk about the book You Are Enough by Rainey Howard. Um, Maggie, are you with us? Yes, I'm here. Oh, <laughs> such enthusiasm. <laughs> oh, my goodness, Maggie. Thank God. <laughs> yeah, okay. uh, uh, I forgot uh, to set my alarm. Um, I apologize. I forgot to set my alarm. Oh, 
It's okay. Right. So you just wake it up. No, 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 I should just you stop. <laughs> yeah, I sure was. I was knocked out. <laughs> Who else is on the line with us? Felicia. Felicia. How are you? Uh, oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. All is well. So what we're going to do, Megan, we're going to just let you all wake up. You got some coffee or something handy? Wake up. <laughs> wake up, I everybody. Coffee. Go sleep <laughs> in bed. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we're gonna just go uh, go ahead and get started. Um, I I didn't get a chance to read the first couple of chapters or up to the third chapter and everything. And then I have my input, but I'm gonna wait and I'm gonna just let Megan just go from, from here and explain about the little bit more about the book. We had did this before earlier um, in the year uh, a couple of months ago, so you got it. Well, good evening, everyone. I apologize for my tardiness. Um, good evening. <laughs> good evening. Um, I, you know, explained in the book. Um, did everybody get the book, or, or some people? I had to say yes. Oh my gosh, had me in tears. <laughs> Yeah, it gives you a really good, um, to me, it gives you a a way to really reflect and look at yourself. Um, You know, when it comes down to relationship, when it comes down to what you make yourself ready for, you know, um, just to see your own personal wealth worth and... Um, I found the book very helpful. Um, that's why I suggested the book when we first had the discussion a few months ago. Um, so we did touch chapter one when we first had the discussion with some of the questions that I asked before. Let me see, is this chapter two? I believe this is chapter two where I had, I have this book. I got it posted. So I got highlights. I got underlines. I got all kinds of stuff here. Okay. So one of the things that I really wanted to dive into is Chapter 2, um, where it says you attract what's in you. Um, it's, well, in my book, it's on page 14. I don't know, because some people have an extended version of the book, so I'm not sure. What page is off for you guys? Excuse me. But... For me, it was on page 14. It says, you attract what's in you. So what brought my attention was in the middle of the path of the book, where it says, don't get, she says, don't get me wrong. I'm not I'm not saying that um, in the first chapter where Steve had a right to cheat on and mistreat um, Brittany. She said, but what I am saying is that you, are, you attract what you are con- unconsciously Communicate from what's inside your mind and soul. This is true even if you have a reputation for being a powerful, strong, and intelligent person. She says you you out your outward appearance displays confidence and strength, but your inward soul may still communicate insecurity and weaknesses. Your powerful reputation is a person. Is I mean is a persona. It's the role you play every day when you go out into the world. But as you develop true, intimate relationships, the reality of your truth is revealed. <laughs> the season, the I'm sorry, the reason you attract unavailable, loveless relationships is because you struggle to accept and give yourself the attention you desperately need. The acceptance and even the toxic love that comes from an emotionally unavailable partner is satisfying because it fills your void of self-love. I was like, okay. (laughs) So, (coughs) excuse me, reading that and thinking about what she said, who wants to dive in and, and, and give a comment to that statement? Oh, Who was on the line? Wait, who's on the line tonight? Uh, everybody except for Renee and um, Robert. 
Okay. 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 Come on. Well, okay. So when I looked in it, the only says the acceptance and even the toxic love that comes from an unim- from comes from an emotionally unavailable pawn is satisfying because it fills the void of self love. So it's basically she's saying that sometimes we end up in relationships, whether it's good or bad, just to say I have someone, or just to say, um, you know. I'm not alone, um, you know, even though I mean, I, you know, it's just a matter of just getting the attention from the person, whether it's good or bad. It doesn't matter. It's because, you know, she says it fills a void of self-love. So this is why sometimes we attract pe- certain people in um, in relationships. And we're like, why are you attracting the same kind of dude? Like earlier today, me and Felicia was having this conversation. If you don't know, I'm down in Atlanta right now with Felicia. So early today, we was having this conversation. It was like, what type of people do we attract in relationships? And I was like, I usually attract, like, these nerdy types. <laughs> and it's like, um, and I like, you know, to be able to have that intellectual conversation, right? Okay. Sometimes you can't get that for everybody. But then sometimes I, I've i I've attracted a mixture. I've attracted those who are just, like, want to be there, but, like she said, really not there. Like, they said, oh, I'll be there, babe. I'll do this, something that. But then when it comes down to the person really being there, they're not there. And it's like, why? You know, and you find yourself retreat, um, repeating cycles of these unhealthy relationships. And so you have to say, okay, so what is really inside of me that's having me attract this type of person, right? Because at one time in my life, all I did was date people who was like long distance. And I'm like, as long as we get on the phone, we can talk, we can laugh, we can this, we can that, we can that. And it was like, but then I felt like, okay, I was getting that attention, but then I'm not really getting the attention I really want because I want to be able to go out to dinner. I want to be able to go out to a movie. I want to be able to go out and do these things, but I couldn't do these things if the person was in what's bubbling and I'm the way I'm at. <laughs> so it was like, okay, Maggie, what you just want the fact that, okay, you can have a conversation with someone, but do you really want the relationship? So I had to do a self-evaluation on me. What is it that I really want? And I think for me with this book, it helped me to evaluate areas of my life that I didn't want to. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah. um, I am not doing all the talking tonight, guys. I'm telling you right now. (laughs) Why not? You're the one that was sleeping. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I am not doing all the talking tonight. Uh, uh, No. Guys, I want to just get no lighting up. Okay, but, you know, I I guess um, I don't have my backup today, but uh, Mr. Robert with me so far. But I think for me, um, and I think I, I shared this with Mike, uh, Maggie earlier, that when I first started re- reading the book in the horror story that was in Chapter 1 and all that kind of stuff, I, 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 I sort of <laughs> I'm going to get in a lot of trouble, <laughs> but I sort of uh, thought that the, the it was – Male bashing, you know, and it's really not, but I felt that way. And, of course, someone asked me, well, why do you feel like it's male bashing? And and I couldn't really explain why because the, the, the stories that she gave was related to a woman that a young lady that had gone through stuff that giving her all over to a gentleman and thought that she was in a, uh, a relationship with him, trying to find out that he was in a relationship with someone else and everything like that. So when I got to Chapter 2, uh, when I began to read Chapter 2, I, I, I began to pick up on what was going on and stuff. But at first, you know, um, this, the book is not, I, when I read the book, I, I, the first, it's not the type of book that I would pick up and read, You Are Enough, uh, and everything that I would pick up and read, but I'm glad I did because some of the things that um, I got, as Megan was talking, was um, – looking out for toxic type relationships and stuff like that. And we do have to, uh, I, I used to have, I don't go over, use a checklist. I, before I got married before, I used to have a um, a checklist that I would go through and everything. And what I found, things I found out going back and reading the book is that the checklist is not always correct. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's not always.
always too because people can show you one side of them and stuff like that, and then there's another side that uh that you don't know about and everything. So I I was really into the book with that, especially when she says, So here's a few signs that your relationship is toxic and it's time to move on and Maggie, I hope I'm not moving on from what you was talking about earlier. Okay. But it says that you are living in past memories more than present experience and that that was definitely me. Okay, you keep mm-hmm. justifying your partner's bad actions. Yep. Mm. <laughs> your relationship <laughs> This is on page 14, but I, I have the ebook version of it. Mm-hmm. Your relationship brings more pain than joy. Mm, yeah, mm-hmm. I saw that. Your partner is causing you emotional, physical, or verbal pain. Your values and beliefs are different from those of your partners. You stay in a relationship mm-hmm. because you, are, you expect things to get better. And I think a lot of us do that. I think we stay in relationships because we expect things to get better. Or, the, or we feel like that he will come around or, in my case, or she will come around. It's not going to be mm-hmm. easy. We also go through the process of trying to change people. Okay? Your partner puts little mm-hmm. or no effort into the relationship and everything. And, then, and, and again, these are here a few signs of the relationship is toxic. And all of us, well, me, I know I have been in some toxic relationship, but because of I've come off, at least I like to think of myself as being loyal and truthful to whoever I'm with and everything, um, you, you try to stay in a way, you know, when you should run <laughs> and stuff like that and everything. So that's one of the things that I got uh, when I read um, Chapter 2, uh, a few other things that she had mentioned, but I guess somebody else. I have a chance to talk. A lot of the things that she wrote, um, she's written in the book, um, is things that I think most of us agree with in a way, you know, whether it's healing or anything like that. We agree. All of us have a process of dealing with um, emotional hurts or healing uh, from past relationship. And and I'm not sure that I, I would like to think that we are d- delivered or we are conquer those things, but I'm not sure that we always do or, we do, or do we just push them in the back of our head to try to forget about it and stuff, but that never, that sometimes that never, that total healing never comes to place and stuff unless God intervenes and stuff and begin the healing process. Yeah. yeah, but see, for God to intervene, we have to first acknowledge the fact that that is the situation, because what happens with most of us is that um, people think, I can get I can jump from one relationship to another without healing from the last relationship. They don't allow themselves time to heal before they jump into another relationship. And then we find, okay, I'm finding that this is the same spirit, different person, but same spirit, because we have not allowed ourselves to heal so that, you know, because to me, you know, when I when I look at it, um, hindsight, when I look at it, stuff that I've gone through, it's like, okay, allow yourself to heal. One person can't replace another person because what ends up happening is, like I said, you repeat that cycle of relationships because you didn't learn your lesson in the in the last one. Every relationship teaches you something about you, and people don't understand it. They think that, oh, this, that person, this, and that, let me just go on to the next person, and then you find this person has the same characteristics as the last person you dated. Why is that? Because we didn't learn, and lesson unlearned is a lesson repeated. Okay. You, what I found, um, I was attracted to with men who were not saved. Mm-hmm. There was only one person um, we were supposed to be moving toward marriage. Um, he was saved. And so we made sure to conduct the relationship correctly because I wasn't trying to mess up, not in, get myself in trouble with God. But he was Jekyll and Hyde, so that, that, that was, I, I didn't even bother with that. The next person I got involved with, he was, I got to say he was um, living his life as a hypocrite because although he was raised in church, and I guess, I guess he had accepted Christ and received the Holy Spirit, not sure, but he was the church player. And because I was in a hurt place and um, I didn't understand why what happened to me had happened, and I just ran from the church and... um I couldn't run from God, though. And so I just 
did what I knew best. I just got together with this guy, and I mean, for me, it was let's just it's fun and games. Some kind of way, emotions got involved. That was ninety six until the year two thousand, and um, at one point, he was trying to talk to one of the sisters in my church, and I'm like. Whoa. You are not going to chump my face in my church. That was it, over and done with. And I went home and I, I looked in the mirror and I looked at myself and I said, oh, my God, you are so ugly. You are so ugly. And the Lord said, either you're going to walk this walk or you're going to die in your sin. And let me tell you, that was a sobering thought. So I just started to pray, and I prayed like I never prayed before. I prayed to the point that I was exhausted. And I fell asleep. But when I woke up, I felt something had changed. And that was it. I left him alone. Now, it wasn't easy. I'm not going to say it was difficult. It was was work. Because whatever you feed your flesh, your flesh is going to want. So then it was training my flesh. We can't do that no more. (laughs) So um, it took a while. But I was good. And um, years later, we ran into each other, and he apologized. And he he sincerely apologized. He was married and had a kid. And um, I was shocked that he apologized for everything that he had said to me, everything he had said about me. And I wanted to know what he said about me, but I wasn't going to ask. And um, then a few years passed, we became friends, so I thought. But those feelings were still there. And this was since October of 2000. Here it is October. No, here it is the year 2022. And it's still there. It's still there. Nothing has ever taken place between us. The man's married with three kids. But it's still there between us. And I'm like, okay, this, this, we can't even be friends. Because we try to just talk and stuff, and and it always goes to those emotions. And I said, I, I, you know, eventually we're going to really mess up. So having an emotional affair is just as bad as having a physical affair. So it's getting past that. And I, I, I was praying. I said, Lord, why do I get involved with these men who I know there's no, it's not going to be anything that's going to take place. So I was sitting down one day, and I was, I was thinking, and I was praying, and the Lord began to speak to me about my future and my husband, and all of a sudden it felt like a giant fist had gripped my heart, and it was fear. And I was, I mean, I'm talking like terror for maybe a few seconds. The fear of really having somebody love me the way I need to be loved scared me because I felt it's beyond me. Is it really going to happen? I say that's what I want, but is it really ever going to happen? And if it does, can I trust him? Can I really give him my heart? Am I going to have my heart stomped on again like my, my, my children's father did me? That was a lot to get past, and I was just, I was 19. 19 with two kids by this man who said he was going to marry me. When I graduated high school, I graduated high school, nothing happened. We had another kid, and he was just out there just doing his thing with every girl in the neighborhood. And, I mean, this was devastating to me because I thought he loved me. I never heard it from my parents. My parents never said they loved me, and, I mean, they were always criticizing me. Then this guy comes along and says, I love you. And I'm like, wow, somebody loved me? Then he did that. So then I was struggling with, well, love don't exist. <laughs> it, it can't exist. My parents never said it. He said it, and it's not true. So maybe love is a myth. And then understanding there is such a thing as love, but am I ever going to have it? Am I worthy of it? Maybe I'm just not worthy of love. Maybe that's why it it just doesn't happen for me. And it and it's so much boiling on, just boiling inside of me that I'm not even aware of. And when I was reading this book and I'm like, Oh my God, that's me. 
I, I tell you, I was crying so hard because it was giving me an understanding of what's going on inside. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, um, Go ahead. you want to say something? Yeah, I want to, uh, because someone had asked me a question earlier uh, about the book, You Are Enough, and and Sister Hope, thank you for sharing that and everything and and for your experience, and this definitely will help someone else out too. Uh, And uh, I guess the question was, why did, uh, we don't have the the author with us to explain why you are enough, but I think, Megan, you can correct me if I'm wrong, the reason she wrote the You Are Enough, is it love or your need for validation or, or is it overcoming people please overcoming people please and I think mm-hmm. when I look at um you are enough is because we um sometimes I talk about most of us don't feel like that we are enough. But but God has already validated us, you know. Or we feel like that we that certain things have to be in place or or wanna be treated and I'm not knocking any of those things, but I'm saying that the question was asked why are you why do we feel like that we are not enough? You know, why do we make, get into a relationship where we do have those um, those toxic relationships that we know that are toxic um, based on what I just read and stuff? Um, is it because that we want to so desperately to be with someone or someone to be in our life? Uh, is it because we're lonely and everything? You know, but we as Christians know who we have that's in us, and that's the love of Jesus Christ. Uh, the other thing that they they mention is that the one another t- tell tell signs that the relationship that holds you back and presents you both of you from growing as an individual. Okay, anything that holds you hold keeps holding you back or pulling you back, especially if God is pressing you forward and everything like that. Because then you begin to doubt, well, I need this person for this, and I, I, I and, and that's not true. The only person we really truly need, we desire those things, relationships, but the one we really need is Christ. You know, but, but because we're flesh and because we're human, we desire to have those type of intimate relationships and everything like that. So, man, I, I just want to make sure I'm, I'm on the right way, am I? <laughs> yeah, um, and the thing is we have to realize is that a lot of times, um, back to what Hope was saying, uh, and you were right, Ray, and thanks for sharing that. Sharing that. A lot of times, um, it's our need for validation. And one thing, um, as a single mom raising my kids and knowing this for myself, is I validated my children at home. Mm-hmm. If you don't have, if you don't validate your children at home. And, and point out who they are and show them the love that they need and, and, and things of that nature, then somebody from the street is going to show it to them and they're not going to show it to them the right way. And that's how we end up in toxic relationships because I didn't get the love I needed when I was growing up at home. Mommy didn't love me the way I thought she did or mommy boyfriend loved me and it wasn't the right type of love. You know, he, he's t- come stuck in my room and doing different things to me at night. You know what I mean? So it's like we grow up with that perception of that's what love is. That's why she talks about having self-love and having validation. The only, only person that can validate us is the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Why? Because he created us. He engrafted us. He put his DNA inside of us. So who, how... Who would know us better than us but him, right? Right. So when we get in a personal relationship with him and learn who we are in him, and to me, this is what that book did for me. It catapulted me in that area because it's like, why am I ending up in this? Why am I looking for this? Why am I having this excuse me, type of relationship? And that's not the type of relationship God designed. God, we are to be in relationship. Our body, we are created for relationships. But it's the right type of relationship. So when we have the right relationship with the father, right? Then he teaches us how that we like how to have that right relationship with people. And one of the things that I was big on, and I am to thank you, Jesus, I've been delivered from it, is people pleasing. Because we end up in these relationships with people because we want to please them. We want to say yes to everything. But because we do that because we don't know our own self-worth, they kind of show us who we are, right, in their eyes. 
And like, but that's not who I am. And then we find ourselves frustrated, right? So that's why it's important to get to know who we are in him. Um, you know, and thinking back to what um, Sister Hope was saying, a lot of times we think, and this is where we got to be careful too, that we're whole and we're delivered because we stop um, picking those types of people or we just stop having relationships, period. Then here come this individual and we think we think we're ready and then we find out, oh, I wasn't as ready as I thought I was. I just stopped, but that don't mean that I was delivered. You understand what I'm saying? I just stopped, but I wasn't really delivered because now these feelings and these emotions are coming up because you never addressed it. You you suppressed it. You masked it. You never addressed it. So, yes, someone that you've been in a relationship with before, you will find that you will probably still have those emotional attachments because you never addressed it. You never dealt with it. You know, um, to be friends with someone that you was in a relationship, it's possible. Absolutely. I've done it. I've been friends with But, see, what happens is you got to know how to draw the line in the sand and, and don't let, and don't cross it. And a lot of times we do it, but they don't. Or or they do it and we don't. So those are things that, um, that's another book, book that I want to bring to the group later on that we need to um, read. It's called Boundaries. Um, that's very helpful. I'm I'm reading that now too. Um, but before I jump into that, I feel that um, and I use I, you know I'm always transparent. I always use myself as an example. There were um, times where I felt okay. I ain't dating no more because I'm sick of this foolishness. I'm just tired, right? I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Then when I decide, okay, I think I'm ready. I find myself repeating that cycle and falling into that sin, that fornication or whatever the case is, right? Because I never dealt with the issue. The issue ain't the person. The issue is within me. So once I deal with what's inside of me and have and allow the Holy Spirit to fix what's inside of me and deal with those things, those demons or those issues that I had suppressed, right? and allow God to pull it out of me, allow myself to get delivered fully, and then allow God to launch me out again and say, okay, now you can go out again. And now I have the tools that I need. I've been delivered and set free, right? And I have the tools that I need that when I go back out again and decide that I want to resurface and um, open myself for dating again, now I know how to do it properly. I'm not... You know, I set my boundaries, and I'm not pushing my own um, concepts on people. Because people will tell you what they want and who they are. It's up to you to pay attention. It's up to you to learn, okay, he's saying he's saved. He's saying he's um, filled with the Holy Spirit. But he got he got some hand problems. He keeps touching. He keeps feeling. He keeps doing this. He keeps doing that. He keeps doing this, and he keeps doing that. So guess what? He ain't good for me because if my love with my love's language says quality time and he's um physical touch and I have a problem with physical touch because if he touches me in the right way I'm gonna end up falling. Right? Mm-hmm. We gotta know us, right? To our own self, be true. We gotta know who we are. And these are some of the things for me that the book pointed out that was so intricate in helping with aiding with deliverance and helping and aiding with understanding if we are available in the right aspects of, sorry, I'm getting hot right now. I don't know. I might not turn the air off, Felicia. How do you turn this air back on? Mm, um, just slide it over, yes. Oh, Jesus. They're trying to burn me up down here. <laughs> 76 degrees. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. Oh, it's it's just, um. It's a little, it's not that hot down there. Girl is burning up, and you know it don't take much for me. All right. So am I making sense, though, Sister Hope? Because I want to be able to help you. Okay. Because I know what it's like to say, you know, know, I'm friends with people I've dated, and, and these are people I have fornicated with in the past, right? So 
when we become friends, they think that now they're going to have friends with friendships with benefits. Oh, heck no. We're not doing that because mm-hmm. now I set my boundary and I'm helping you understand. I'm, you want to talk to me like you talked to me 20 years ago. I'm not there no more. So if you want to be my friend, this is what it is. Take it or leave it. It, it, if it was, I mean, I, I, um, I don't know if we've really been friends, but I mean, I've known people that I had. Well, I mean, I really didn't have a relationship. It was just something I was doing, and you know, keep in contact, say hello, and and I don't want you no more. I don't want to be bothered with you. <laughs> but it was just just I don't that. Want you no more. that and then I, I was saying to myself, what is the connection between us? I, I call it our dance. Like, I mm. come to my senses and like, hello, he's married. It's not going to work. You can't be friends. Just leave it alone. Unfortunately, you can't stay in contact. And then something will happen where I need to move or I, I need something fixed. And he's like my hero. He's there, Johnny on the spot. And... That's when the door opens up and we just talk. I was going to say, because you open it, yeah. Come all over again, and here come the dance again. And Mm -hmm. I said to myself, what is that? I mean, he apologized. I forgave him. And I even, no, I forgave him after he apologized. I can't say I forgave him before he apologized. (laughs) But um, (laughs) it's like, what is this connection between us? And, I mean, everybody in the church if something goes on with him, oh, this and that, ha- and this and that, why are you coming and telling me? Why? It's none of my business. He knows this about me. I mean, it's like our lives are so connected. Even when I had my knee surgery, he had an accident and broke his hip. So he was using a rollator and a cane <laughs> the same as I was. And when he told me, did you hear about the accident? When I was telling him about my surgery, he said, what accident? I said, what accident? And when he told me, I was like, what? And, I mean, I'm like, he's in a situation, I'm in a situation. It's like it seems like our lives just connect in some kind of way. But I'm saying to myself, this is just deception. It's got to be deception. But you know what it also is? A, it's a spirit of familiar familiarity. A lot of times when we're familiar with someone, it's, unless you break that, that spirit or that tie with that person, it's, they they just pop up or they just, you know, like become an intricate. Like, and then, you know, men, men are fixers. So you by yourself... We must have this thing. Now you need something fixed. Oh, sure, I'll come and fix it for you. Because let me tell you something about men. And Ray can vouch for me if he wants to. But my pastor, he told us this. As young women, years ago, men will always leave a door. If you leave a door open with a man, he will walk right in it. Yeah. Tell me I'm lying, Ray. If I'm lying, I'm flying. I'm (laughs) I'm not agreeing with that. (laughs) If I'm lying, I'm flying. It's the truth anyhow. And he was a man, and he said it. He said men love to leave doors open. So it's up to us to recognize the fact. We can't can't allow that revolving door. We have to be the one to shut that door. And that's exactly what it is, a revolving door. And, I mean, I'm saying, listen, you know, I wish we could be friends, you know, but this isn't going to work because my feelings are getting hurt here. And uh-huh. what you're talking to me and sharing with me, you need to be doing with your with your wife, you know. And, I mean, it's not fair. It's not fair to me. It's not fair to, it's to, a to door you. Open. It's not fair to her, uh-huh. you know. And I, I, I can't I can't do this, you know, because I'm hurting myself. Uh-huh. Yep, you're opening, you're reopening scars that have not been healed. This is, you know, like when you have a scab, you work in the medical field. When you have a yeah. scab, the scab is there to protect the, the wound so it can heal. But if you constantly yeah. pull in that scab, it's going to burst, it's going to bleed and never heal. Yeah. That's and that's exactly what we what do. We we toy with it. We play with it, think that, oh, I can handle it, oh, I can deal with it. And the truth of the matter is, no, it need, that thing, we need to stop 
pulling those scabs off and let it fall and let it get healed in its totality. And it's true what you said about suppressing. Because I remember I was listening to Ron Carpenter. This was good gracious, maybe 10 years ago. And he was talking about suppression. He said, if you take a golf ball and put it in a bucket of water and you just hold your hand on it, it stays down. But the moment you take your hand off, it raises to the surface. He said, Uh you have to kill it. Get rid of it. You know, because if you suppress it, it's always going to come back. And and I said, that's what it is. And at Uh the beginning of the book, when she was talking about her mother and how she was just, she just wanted her mother's approval so bad, I said, my God, that was me too. I Mm -hmm. wanted my mother's approval. I tried everything. I would shop for the entire family. You know, and at that time, I wasn't making that much money working at the bank, but I would make sure I did grocery shopping for everybody. I would clean the entire house. Me and my sons would go out in the yard and pull up the weeds. I was doing everything just to hear my mother say how proud she was of me and how much she loved me and depended on nothing. She, nothing was good enough for my mother, nothing. She didn't appreciate anything I did. Because you were trying to people please her. You were people pleaser. Yeah, I used to be a people pleaser too, and I mm-hmm. learned – I learned at a young age how to say no. Mm-hmm. When I learned how to say no, I said it a lot. And I've never had a problem walking away, never. Mm-hmm. My mother, she taught me that because mommy was good for I was going to say, you learned that from because of how they treated you. It's easy to walk away. But that don't mean walking away that you actually dealt with it. You avoided it. Yeah. You avoided it. All right, so we've been talking a lot. What's up, Felicia? Tell me what, what you got out of the part you read. Michelle? Are you there, Miss Felicia? <laughs> you just right, I put it on mute. Okay. Oh, yeah, give me a second. <laughs> I had to go into the kitchen for a minute. Oh. Hold on. All right. Okay. Um, so we're up to me now, right? Yeah. Okay. For me, mm-hmm. um, it seems my attraction um falls into the category of neediness. Um, of what? Neediness, neediness. Oh, okay. Okay, People who are needy, um, I like to help people. I'm always trying to, you know, we can work it out, let's see what can happen, trying to find a way. But listening and reading and going over and reflecting on my past relationships, the one thing that really caught my attention and stood out is that each person that I've dated was always a person who were who was needy, dependent on. I'm gonna say more of mamas, mama children. Where every time something happens, we call mommy and this and that. And it was like, okay, when will you become your own person after a while? You know. But it it took a minute to get to that point because in the beginning. Everything is all good, you know. They they tell you they're independent, they tell you this, and then you find out later on through their actions as well as their words that, you know, when things get rough, you start treating me how your mother would say, you know, you should do this, you should do that, and then you started giving me that same advice. And I'm like, um, did your mother give you that advice? And then you're giving it to me as though it's for me or was it for you? And when it came down to it, I felt like they were looking for that mother figure all the time and for me to give answers. <laughs> so now I have gotten to the point where I'm like, I don't want to be the, the mama figure. I don't want to have all the answers. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. In a relation, you know, In a relationship, I want somebody to do it for me. So when it comes to, like, and and reading the book also, um, and I didn't finish the book, but just a little bit that I did read, 
it was like, okay, my question was, why do I attract the same type of people as well? And I'm like, huh, did I see it growing up? Yes, I did. Um, was it part of my family dynamics? Yes, it was. Was it something that I, I've, I've seen through um, watching other people? And most of the time, I was, I'm a church child. Most of the people that I saw were in church. And every person that I was in contact with through the church, it was the same thing. So then I found myself finding, you know, getting attracted to the same people. Um, thank God for deliverance. Um, now I'm on a whole nother, okay, I get it. I see the triggers. I see the signs now. It took me a long time to get there, but it took a lot of prayer. But I'm 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 understanding this book more and seeing myself in in places that I didn't know I was in and mm-hmm. places that I may see myself, okay, I might be falling into this trap. And the book kind of helped me pick out some of the things like as to date as of today to say, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me see, am I falling backwards? Am I going backwards here? You know, because, again, like you said, Maggie, familiar spirits. So Mm -hmm. it's like it's something that I know, and it was something that I was comfortable with because it put me in control sometimes Mm -hmm. because they were looking for somebody to tell them what to do. So I like this book. It helps me. Yeah, I think it's it's a good tool to have in our arsenal because um it one thing I'm I'm big on is reflection reflecting because it's so important that we look at ourselves and look at where we play a part in things before we point the fingers at others. Because um and me and Felicia had a conversation yesterday with another young lady and I said to them it was like, you know, that one finger we pointing the finger at that person but how many more pointing back at us, right? Because at the end of the day, we we live with us and we got to deal with us, right? So if we want that better relationship, we want that quality relationship. I'm not saying don't date because in hindsight, when you're looking and seeing and and picking and pulling and saying what went wrong, how did this, why did this happen this way, it's all about how we allow things to happen, how we interpret the way things happen. And it helps us build so that we can find that suitable date for ourselves and which God desires for us. And he said he would give us the desires of our heart, but our desire had to be towards him first in order to get what we desire. And some, you know, and we got to watch our desires because some of us got some jacked up desires. But, <laughs> but, you know, when we allow God to work in us those situations and pull those things out of us, you know, dealing with the familiar spirits, dealing with, um, I know Ray don't believe in this because he said there's some scriptural back, uh, reference in, in soul ties. You know, when a man and a wife, when a man and a woman comes together, that's why, you know, um, um, Sex was instituted for marriage, right? So when a man and woman come together, we exchange body fluids, we exchange DNA, we exchange things to become one. So how do we break that if we, you know, we have to pray those things out of us? We have to pray those things through us. I sent videos out today. I think it was today I sent the videos in the chat um, to people regarding um, breaking um, cycles and, 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 and breaking things off of our lives. Um, I think it's called um, the prayer that routes demons, but it's talking about activation. And before we can be activated in areas, there's some things that need to be broken or out of our, or taken out of our spirit that's ungodly, right? You know, generational things, um, cycles. Um, familiar, familiar, familiarities. These things have to be broken. And that's why some of these, you know, we find these relationships are so repetitive because what has happened is we never broke the cycle of it. We just jump right back into it. And I said this earlier, so I don't want to sound repetitive. We jump right back into it. And and that's why we find ourselves in these unavailable relationships. And sometimes we ourselves are unavailable in a relationship, not just them, we ourselves. 
We are emotionally unattached. You know, I'm not going to never let you know. We say stuff like, I'm never going to do it again. I'm never going to let this happen to me again. I'm not going to find myself in this place again. And these walls. So we get into another relationship, and now we like, <laughs> you know, like, um, this, I'm animated about this, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm so strategic, so strategic in this area, in that area. And then we're not allowing what is supposed to happen in this relationship to happen in the way God designed for it to happen. Because it's an interaction. The Bible says iron sharp is iron, so one man sharp is another. Being in a relationship, and if it's God ordained, we're supposed to draw strength from one another. We're supposed to help one another. That's what God designed marriage for. That's what God gave me and helped me. We're going to help me, whatever they're lacking, uh, and we're going to entertain and intertwine and, and do and help each other. But we got to get to that place, right? Right. Because I'm sure we all desire marriage at some point in our life. Correct. Then we just have to allow Holy Spirit to really work in us these things, and then we have. And sometimes it may take writing down, reflecting, and writing down your shortcomings that you. How to pray yourself through those things. Yeah. You want to say something, right? Oh, yeah, I didn't know where you were finished talking and I wanted to wait, but um I'm finished because I ain't doing all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like somebody else just joined us. Okay. Um somebody else just joined us? Yeah, they got their hand raised. Next? Oh, they got questions. Yes. Love it. Okay. Yes, I I'll call it four six ten. You're on with us. No, no, it it it's hope. For some reason, oh. I got disconnected. Oh, I don't know okay, what happened. Okay. <laughs> okay, right. Yeah, I mean, uh, Maggie made a statement um, about um, soul ties, and yeah, I don't, you know, I understand the concept of it, and I understand that when we um, have a relationship with different people, uh, that we could. Transfer, but I don't believe that's so tough. I just believe that's just something else, and I can't think like that right now. But no, I don't believe that there are so tough because so tough, so tough to me means that someone has already attached to me, you know, to my soul or to, or to their soul or whatever, and I'm, I'm carrying them around. And I believe that once we become Christians, those so tough or so called so tough shouldn't be in existence. The only one that should be dwelling in you and stuff like that. It's the Holy Spirit. So right. that's why I, and that's, yeah, that's why I say that. Uh-huh. Okay. The other yeah, thing but... I'm not finished. <laughs> <laughs> I know you want to talk a bit. But the other thing I, I wanna talk about, um speak on real quick. And y'all forgive me, I I, I joke around with Maggie a lot. But uh, the other thing is the she she mentioned in the book, do you speak um positive affirmations over your life daily? And I think mm-hmm. it would probably I think I think if we begin to um to do that more often, um, there's a lot of healing that began to take place in our lives and stuff that people said that was negative in our lives mm-hmm. before. You know. And I know that when I used to um uh, counsel people or help people I was I would tell them to um look into a mirror and see them look at and see themselves, you know, and begin to affirm who they are and everything like that, you know. And a lot of people uh, that I've met over the years don't have that ability just to look directly into a mirror and everything. Let me say something. They sure and, don't. Yeah, and say, I'm okay, you know. I might, yeah. not, I might have made some mistakes in my life, but I'm okay, you know. And especially we as Christians begin to affirm ourselves, or who God, not who, what, or who we say we are, but who God says that we are. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, she goes on to say, "Do you nurture your mind, your body, and your soul through meditation, prayer, have to eat, eating, and daily re- re- relax- relaxation? Do you have? Do you live a full life by consistently learning new things, passion, accomplishments, new goals, utilizing your gifts and your ta- talents? If you answer no to any of these questions, I want you to know there's hope, and and that you can start living a more fulfilled life starting today." 
it's never too late, you know. It's so never too late. Yeah, so we get caught up in these uh, this rut of relationship. It's you know, the same cycle, but God never meant, meant for us to go through the same cycle. Somewhere in Mag mission about generational curses or just curses, they they should they need to be broken, okay? And we need to be uh, sure of our identity and everything like that. And I'm not saying that we're not going we're not gonna to have some ups and downs because part of life is, is having ups and downs and stuff. And part of life is sometimes of feeling like, you know, be that that woe is me type of thing. But understanding that even with those those moments, and it shouldn't be a a whole afternoon, but <laughs> those moments, it's going back to reflect who we are in Jesus Christ. You know, and reflecting who, uh, what God has done for us, and what He will do for us in life. I admit it. <laughs> um. So. Um, doing the reflections are very helpful. Um, I did um, what I call the mirror of reflection with my fifth grade students. <clears throat> and at a young age, and I told them this, you know, we don't have a problem looking in the mirror trying to look cute doing this and the other. When, it, we, we, when it's time to look in the mirror and really look at you, that's what people have a problem with that. They're fifth graders. You cannot believe we were all in the booth and crying and carrying on because they could not look in that mirror and say not one good thing about themselves. And we call my fifth graders. Right. These right. are children who are 11, 10, 11 years old who should feel wonderful about themselves. And they had a hard time. And I made them do it. I said, okay, we're going to cry together. We're going to laugh together, but you're going to do it. Because it's so important that you can look yourself in the mirror and say, I'm beautiful. See yourself as you desire to see yourself. See yourself as God sees you. I couldn't say as God sees you because we was in school. But at the end of the day, who do you want to look, when you look in the mirror, who do you want to see? You want to see that strong, educated, um, self-confident individual who is beautiful, right? So say that about yourself. Say it until you begin to feel it. And and it was hard. They could not, they would say it, not look in the mirror. Nope, we won't look in the mirror. And I, I say it all the time. It's so important that we do this to ourselves because God already validated us. He gave us the information through the B-I-B-L-E, right? Mm-hmm. All we have to do is take that, take the information that's in there, the word of God, which is life, is spirit. The Bible said man should not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. So we take the word of God and we make it applicable in our lives. Take that scripture where he says, I made you fearfully and wonderfully made. You are the apple of my You know, take that scripture and begin to look in the mirror and, and use what God has given us the tools for validation of who we are. And when we begin to do and say these affirmations about ourselves, you be, begin to feel something fall off of you. You begin to feel that you you begin to build yourself up on the inside and you feel like you can run out and you can conquer great things in the mighty name of Jesus just by doing that. Believe it or not, just by doing that alone. Positive affirmations are so powerful. If you say to yourself, I'm dumb, stupid, black, whatever, whatever, whatever the case is, mm -hmm, you're going to feel defeated every time because those words are not words that would build you up. It would tear you down, and you will always stay downtrodden and all we feeling. Woe is me! This is this is the 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 uh, how people say this cause I've been dealt and all this other crap. No, mm-mm, that's not what God intended for. God's intent for us to live the best life on this side, and we can. It starts from the inside out. Did you guys watch that movie? Did I tell you about that movie? The movie. It's a inside Disney out. movie. Huh? Yes. Inside so out. I think and that just, movie helps you deal with all the things, all the emotions, and all the things that go on on the inside. It's a very, it's such a simple thing for kids, but it's so powerful at the same time. And I think every adult needs to see that movie. <laughs> it's on Disney Plus. But the work it starts from the inside out. What we say to ourselves determines how we face the world each and every day. To get up and go to work in the morning, to go to our jobs, to to deal with life circumstances is what we say to ourselves that determines how successful we can be. 
that's why I'm glad you put up um, positive affirmations, right? It, that's how powerful it is. It's the simplest thing. If we just take the time, you will see how much your life will change by just utilizing that. I'm done. <laughs> You're done. Amen. <laughs> All right. Anybody, anyone else? Just make. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else got anything to add? Hope, hope, are you still with with us? Yes, yes, oh, okay. I'm still with. Hope is taking it in. Hope is fun tonight. Oh, okay. mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. uh, Felicia, in the words of wisdom. Um, no, I'm I'm with the affirmations. I believe in those. They work yeah. every morning for me. They get my yeah. day started. Yeah. And they get right. me through the day. Right. So I'm right. an affirmation believer. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. I think that that the worst affirmation, or and it's not based off of pride or ego or anything like that, but it's based off of uh, looking at ourselves the way God sees us. You know, mm-hmm. uh, like the apple of His eye. You know, that we the head and not the you know, Every time I hear that, like, something inside of me. I'm sorry. Every time I hear that, he on the apple of his eye. Just something inside of me just gets. Yeah. I'm you know. sorry, guys. Yeah, we're, it's okay. I'm used to it. <laughs> we're, 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 we're his peculiar treasure. You know, I do the same thing. Mm-hmm. His peculiar treasure. You know. And those things are beginning mm-hmm. to get comfortable. We, we are friend. We, I'm a friend of God. Those things begin to bring us comfort, you know, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Whether no matter w- where we are at that point, and uh, and uh, the, it's, it's, you and it's, a, it's a life. journey. It's a journey or a process to get to that place, that point where you can look yourself in the in the mirror and declare those things for you, you know, that, mm. you, know, that, that you are that who God said that I am. You, we are and stuff like that. So it's a, a process. It's, and not, sometimes it's, it's not, in many cases, it's not done overnight, you know. But the more mm-hmm. we, I have the a more question. We, go ahead. Okay. <laughs> I cut you right you. off mid sentence. <laughs> it's okay. I'm, I'm used so to sorry. it. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I thought you had, I, you had paused for a minute, so I thought you had finished. So we were talking at the same time because you had paused for just that brief moment. Um. I know you don't believe in soul ties, okay, but what would you call it? Um, I don't know. I wouldn't call it soul ties because soul ties imply, applies, implies that that somebody as soul is, is tied to mine, okay? That's what happens when two people have sex. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I don't agree with that. Okay. Okay. Let me tell you something about me and and my ex. When we were together and we would maybe have a disagreement and it's like, okay, we're not talking right now. I remember one time, it was in the summertime, and at that time I lived right next to Easton Parkway. So now can you can imagine the noise. And the L train was there. Was it the L or the J? No, the J train. So you have cars constantly going by and blowing their horns. I was laying in bed one day, and I heard a, a, a car say, bump, bump, bump. <laughs> I knew it was him. I knew it was him. Whenever the phone would ring, and at that time, you know, you had caller ID and everything, I didn't even have to look at the caller ID. I could feel when it was him. Another time, I was on my way home, and same thing, we weren't talking, And as I was going down the block, I could feel him. And I turned around and I looked, but I didn't see him. And I just went on home. So when we would start talking again, he said, and I I asked him, did he, was he driving down Eastern Park where he didn't blow his horn? He said, how you know? And I said, I felt you. And when I felt him when I was going down the street, he said, you turned around and looked right in my direction, but you didn't see me. It was that much of a connection that I could just feel when he was around. I could feel when he was thinking about me. When the phone rang, I could be a, in another room. I know it's him. I knew it was him. So what would you call that? I, I don't have a right now. I don't. I don't have a word to give you. I hope, I, but I wouldn't. 
considered to be soul tied because again, when you think of something being tied um, two souls, um, the entire Adam and Eve, even though they he she came from um, his rib, they wasn't soul tied together. She had her soul, and he he had his soul, and then they they laid together, and of course, and, of course, and everything, and um, they made <laughs> whatever. But it, I'm stuttering like crazy because I don't have an answer for you. <laughs> Well, see, here's the thing. Here's the thing. There are ungodly soul ties, and there there are healthy soul ties. Like man and woman being married, that's a healthy soul tie because he did it in the union of Christ the way God instructed it to be so. Outside of marriage and being intertwined with another person, fornicating adultery, that is a, it, it's considered, and maybe we just need to dive in a little deeper to understand what soul ties derive from, because it could be uh, from a different language and we got it in American language. You understand what I'm saying? Because there's so many different Greek and 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 and, and um, Hebrew, Hebrew um, language um, things when it comes to the Bible, you know, of interpreting of, of scriptures. So, um, Anytime, and I understand your point, right? Don't get me wrong, I'm, and I'm definitely not knocking you. You know I don't do that. But anytime a person intertwine and interact and exchange DNA, you're intertwining, and you're becoming one, but not in one in the biblical sense as was instituted for marriage. Yeah, but I, I understand what you just said. But to me, that's not so tight. It's just because any time we lay with, uh, uh, with the opposite sex or whatever, and then we lay with someone else over a period of time and stuff like that, there's a little bit of us that I guess that's where you're coming from that goes, uh, that lingers. But I wouldn't consider it so tight because uh, it's not so tight because, again, how can, two, <laughs> how can something be attached or be part of me it's up because of something I did. I just don't. I don't see the connection. Plus, again, it's not biblical. Okay, nowhere in the Bible does it talk about someone having soul ties. You know, and then the scripture talks about marriage. Point. I'm saying, but okay, can yeah. I finish, please? <laughs> yeah, I thought I had. I'm sorry. Okay, this is all right. Look, but I, I mean, I do not understand that with um, the Bible went with Adam and Eve, they became one, or you know, and the flesh and everything, they became one. And everything like, but to me, that's not really considered so tough. I mean, I, I just something. I think for something like that, I think that it would be a little bit more specific uh, about um, something being a soul tie. And I think that we could be connected with people, but it's not dealing with the soul. It's just dealing with the flesh. Maybe the word that we're looking for hope is flesh. Flesh ties. Maybe that's what it is. Mm-hmm. I think we can have flesh ties with people. Where that you know now as far, are you laughing really now I don't know as far as um, the premonition of someone giving me the call you know they get called I I can't that's I, I don't know how to explain it I do know that we are gifted with the um, gift sometimes of being prophetic as a and it's not 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 always um, um, now see we getting into another whole new bug and that's the, Talk about spiritual gifts, teachings, and all that kind of stuff. So, I don't want to get caught up in that. But you guys still hear me? I lost myself. Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm clear. Uh, okay. Yeah, I get it about the connection. So that's even with a, a parent and their child. Like if something's going on with your child, and all of a sudden you feel something's not right. Yeah, yeah. But but with so times you talk about something that only God is in control of. Nothing that we do can 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 connect with the as far as the soul because God created the soul. So that's just saying that with God with all the power that he has can allow anything or anybody to come and connect directly to your soul and cause you to have problems or cause you to go through generation or curses or cause you to continue repeating meeting or dating or being interested in the same type of person and everything like that. And I just don't see it that way. But see, here's the thing: um, we or we can give access to those people. Not just, and that's why we have to guard certain things about ourselves because we give access to it. But not to the soul. <laughs> why? Why not? 
we how do, how do people get demon possessed? We, we, we get access to those things through our mind, but not to the soul. The, mo- the, the mindset of a person and the soul of a person so the is, will, is different. Okay, so the mind, the soul, the will, and all of that. So like you said, it's a whole other teaching, and we probably need to do a little more research so that we can explain it a little better. Um, yeah. Because... That 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 in itself, um, that's a whole nother class. So okay. let's 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 just pause the pin right there. Yeah, we can agree to this. <laughs> <laughs> because there are, because the mind, the will, emotions, the concept and personality, those are the soulish friends. Well, and it, sometimes it we find ourselves. That's why I said they're ungodly soul ties, and they are healthy ones. I mean, we could agree but with that. I, like I you said, don't. we gonna we we not gonna we we gonna we gonna we gonna pin it there. We not gonna go no, more no, into that because that's a whole nother subject. So, yeah. who closing us out tonight? You. <laughs> mm mm. Why not? No, I don't okay. know. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. No. I'm just hey, playing. You can, uh, for, sister Felicia, sister Maggie, don't want to close us out. <laughs> <You can> close us <laughs> out. <laughs> okay. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we have together. We thank you for this lesson. Uh, thank you for each and every person that was on the line today, those who are listening. I ask that you cover them with your, cover us with your blood, protect our families, protect those who are near and far from us, those who are tied to us. I ask that you cover all families, all children. Uh, I ask that you keep us and perfect peace. I thank you for everyone who is out here who have who has come to celebrate a time with me. I thank you for guiding us. I thank you for the wisdom and the knowledge that you have given each and every one of us at this time that we can come together and share each other's opinions, facts, and everything. I ask that you keep us. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 Well, ladies, I want to thank you all for joining. This has been Madison of the Heart Singer Ministry. And, and then we've been talking about the book You Are Enough and talking about some other things, too. <laughs> a book by <laughs> Rainey Howard. And then I was glad to um, see um, Sister Hope, hear your voice, Felicia and Maggie. And we'll talk next time. God bless everyone. God bless. God bless you. All right. Have a good night, everybody. You too. Night. All right. Bye bye.